Welcome to Beyond Bosch. I'm your host, Jessica Dahl. Today, we have an exciting guest, Katie Woodling. She is the Manager of Product Management, Bosch Home Comfort, North America. Katie, thanks so much for being here. Hey, Jessica. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So where are you dialing in from? I am dialing in from Woburn, Massachusetts, right outside of Boston. Oh, nice. Okay. So yeah, today we are virtually recording. Um, we've been doing some live recordings in the studio, and I'm so glad to be able to like record with you over across a few states. Um, I barely introduced you. A title doesn't do anything um, to really describe who you are and what you do. I'd love for you to share a little bit more with the audience of who you are and what you're working on. Sure, yeah. So who I am, I'm originally from the Cleveland, Ohio area. Go Buckeyes. Sorry for all those Michigan fans out there. Um, went to Ohio State, background in mechanical engineering, and my current role is manager of product management. So what that means is I'm basically determining the roadmap for HVAC products um, for the North American market. Nice. And how long have you been doing that? I've been managing the team since 2020, but I've been with Home Comfort since 2017. Yeah, okay. February 2017. So a little over seven years. Nice. So kind of what, I mean, you said the HVAC uh, products, like what would those be? Yeah, so think about it like your typical air conditioner that's, you know, sitting outside your house or the furnace that's keeping you warm in the wintertime or kind of a combo of both that we call a heat pump, um, does both heating and cooling. So typical products that are heating and cooling, typically residential spaces. Okay. Nice. So how did you end up in this role? Yeah, so kind of a funny Bosch journey. Um, out of my master's degree, I joined the Bosch Junior Managers Program. Um, so basically every six months for two years, I did something different. I started in product management with starters and generators in Plymouth, Michigan. Then I went down to work as a manufacturing engineer um, in South Carolina for fuel injectors. Then I went to New Richmond, Wisconsin, did project management for Bosch Packaging Technology. Then I hopped over and I was in Stuttgart at the Schillerhua, and I was in a corporate strategy role. Um, and then after all of that, I said, okay, I really like product management. There was another colleague from the junior managers program that ended up um, in a brand new business unit within Home Comfort North America. He said, hey, we're looking for more product managers. And that's kind of how I got started after the training program um, with Bosch Home Comfort. Nice. And so I'd love to hear kind of, you know, taking a step back, you said anything you think of like heating and cooling, but when you say heat pump, like to me, that's not as familiar. That's not a term that I really recognize. I'm assuming a lot of people either. Like, can you help me understand what that is and kind of talk a bit about more, more about that? Yeah, for sure. So if you think of an air conditioner, it's basically the square looking box that's sitting outside your house. The job of an air conditioner is to cool your home. A heat pump is more or less the same exact thing, except there's one component that's diff different and it's a reversing valve. So it's switching from heating mode to cooling mode. Um, more or less the same thing. I would guess most typical homeowners haven't necessarily heard of a heat pump, but they may actually have a heat pump in their home. Gotcha. That's interesting. And you guys are working on, or have you launched your latest? Can you talk about that? The it, What is it called again? Um, so yeah, IDS Ultra is okay. coming out this fall and that's a cold climate heat pump. So okay. historically with heat pumps, um, there's been this kind of bad rep for them where people are concerned that a heat pump's not able to efficiently um, keep your house warm on really cold days because heat, pump, heat pumps tend to work less efficiently the colder it gets outside. Um, so this topic of if we want to switch the industry from heating with gas furnaces to heating with clean electricity or heat pump technology, um, you need a heat pump that can work really well in really cold temperatures, especially for you, know, you in Michigan, me here in Boston, and customers even further north in Canada and so on. So IDS Ultra kind of addresses that need. Oh, nice. That's exciting. Yeah, it's really cool. That's awesome. So what makes you, you feel like when I've talked with you before, you're very passionate about what you do. Um, one of the things that I always admire when we're having a conversation is you talk about your team and how you like to kind of engage, empower, and teach them to do something better than you. Can you speak a bit more about that? 
Yeah, yeah. So I have a team of six product managers that work for me right now. They work in various product areas within the HVAC space. But yeah, my favorite part of being a manager um, is really, you know, when you teach someone something and then they do it way better than you ever could. One example is, you know, we came out with a connected app for one of our heat pumps. I'm not an expert in apps. You know, I know a lot about heat pumps, but definitely not in mobile app technology. So I'm teaching, you know, this associate all about, you know, how heat pumps work. And then they created this wonderful app and thought of all these use cases that, you know, way above and beyond what I could have ever thought of. Um, so I think the coolest thing about being a manager is having a team with all these big brains that come up with these awesome ideas. Mm, I love that. That's very cool. And so with speaking of like, you know, kind of teaching, did you have anybody in your life that inspired you or some some moments or things like that that kind of set you on this journey? Yeah, for sure. So I'm actually a third generation mechanical engineer. So my grandfather, um, he was a mechanical engineer for Goodyear Aerospace back when Goodyear used to do aerospace as well. And then my dad was a mechanical engineer um, working at NASA, uh, NASA Glenn Research Center in Cleveland. So I come from a long line of mechanical engineers. Um, and even as a little kid, I would love to create little inventions in the backyard or always be like playing with wood and nails and doing whatever creating little creations um so yeah i think my family always said oh she's gonna be an engineer one day and i tried to fight that like you guys don't know me i'm like i'm an eight-year-old i'm gonna do whatever but yeah i ended up as a mechanical engineer um so yeah i would say that my grandfather and my grandpa were big influences on me becoming uh, an engineer i love that it's so true you're a product of your environment right totally <laughs> yeah I love that because I have I actually have an eight year old daughter so and she's very geared towards that which neither my husband or I are and so it's just like it's interesting to watch that kind of unfold very much in order too she's very much about putting things in order inventing things doing yeah so that's cool. love it yeah <laughs> um, I have a nine month old and you know too early to tell if she's going to be the fourth generation of mechanical engineers but it would be cool but um, I'll be happy with whatever she does. Of course. Oh my gosh. Okay. A nine month old. That's amazing. And so was that a big adjustment? Oh yeah. Yeah. Being a mom is I think the hardest job in the whole world. So kudos to all the moms out there, but it's really fun too. You know, it's not yeah. always fun, but a lot of the times, you know, it's really fun to watch as she learns, she grows, she's learning how to crawl right now. She's crawling everywhere. So yeah, it's really fun. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. Um, so I love to find out kind of just because I feel like when we overcome obstacles, we learn so much. I'd love to hear a bit about maybe one of the biggest obstacles you've had to overcome or something that's just kind of been like that thing that you're like, oh, once I overcame that, something unlocked. I'd love to hear. Totally. Yeah. I'm thinking of the biggest obstacle that I can remember recently. So I actually became a manager of people two months into the global pandemic. So I'd never managed people before. And then here we are, hey, you're in charge of this team of five and uh, you're not in the same office. You know, you might be in different cities even at this point. Now like figure out how to manage these people. So that was really interesting. I think we all face different obstacles in the pandemic in varying ways. But yeah, for me, it was manage a team, but you can't be together and learn how to use all these new platforms. Now you're on Teams, now you're on videos, like now you need all these digital tools, figure it out, like you got it. Yeah. So that was definitely a big obstacle um, that I had to overcome. Yeah, I, I feel that's super relatable. And then I also feel like it's like, an, it's a weird transition back to kind of like the hybrid working and being in person. Like, it's like everyone kind of finally got the hang of being remote. And then it's like, oh wait, how do we interact again, you know? For sure. Some things are a lot easier, I would say, in person, like, you know, being able to just draw out on a whiteboard, like your thoughts or draw a picture. Um, we're still hybrid. Typically, um, we work from home on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, and then we're going into the office for our kind of collaboration days on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So we try to have it when we're in the office. Let's make sure we're meeting as a team, not just joining, you know, teams meetings with our headphones from our desk. Right. Yeah. Um, so a lot of what we do in product development is work together with the engineering team or um, work collaboratively with marketing and sales. So we really try to, you know, make the most out of when we're in the office together and meet in person. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I'm sure everyone's grateful for that. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, you know, 
people don't love having a commute, but at the same time, I think they see the value of being able to work together in person. But then there's also value from those Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. What other work can I do, you know, when I'm not needing to be face to face with other people? So I think yeah. it's a good balance. I really like it. And I think my team does as well. Yeah, absolutely. So what are you, as you're talking about, like kind of you're working on things that, um, you know, heat and cool people's homes, you're making them better. You're also collaborating with marketing and engineers, which I think is really cool because you're kind of getting the bo best of both worlds. And mm -hmm. as an engineer yourself, like having that mindset, but being able to work with marketing people, I think is really beneficial. Um, what are you excited about or what are you the most proud of? Yeah, I think. You know, for me, working on heat pumps, people have asked me, like, what, like, why do you, is it exciting working in HVAC? Like, that doesn't sound very exciting on, you know, on the surface. But when you think about it, 50% of the energy used in a residential home is to heat or cool the, the space. So if you care about the environment, you care about sustainability, and you want to actually be able to make a difference, HVAC is actually a great way to do that. So that's how I like to think about, you know, the job that I'm doing here. I'm working on high efficiency clean energy, and keeping people comfortable. I think a lot of times people don't think about the fact that they're comfortable. Right? If you're comfortable, you're just comfortable. You're not thinking about like, oh, like my heat pump is working to keep me efficiently comfortable. right? But that is, that's the case. So I would say I'm very proud of being able to work in an industry where I can make a difference in terms of environmental sustainability and I can keep people comfortable. I love that. That's so true. It's like, maybe we should stop more often and be like, hey, I'm really comfortable right now. Like, that's great. Oh, well. Thanks, HVAC engineers. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> exactly. The other cool part about my job is you mentioned I'm kind of like in the middle of the organization and my product management team. Um, I think it's cool to be voice of customer because a product manager's job is you're the CEO of the product and your job is to bring the voice of customer. What do the people want and get that specified together with engineering? And then once we specify what that product is, how do we bring it to market in the most strategic way? How can we be different, better? Um, and differentiate ourselves from the competition. I come from, you know, a sports family, I played soccer, basketball. I love this competitive spirit. So this, how do we position ourselves to be different and better to me is really exciting and fun. Yeah, I can see that. That's awesome. I love, that's such a great way of looking at your work, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, this has been so good. I love asking everyone who comes on here because I, I think it's so valuable um, to have a takeaway, but do you have anything, I'm kind of putting you on the spot, do you have anything, um, a piece of advice that you could give to those listening? Could be personal or career driven, but just something to kind of leave the audience with. Yeah, totally. I think maybe it'll be a mix of personal slash professionals. Um, I think pick a job that you're passionate about and make sure that you're always having fun. If there's any reason we are here on this planet, it's let's have fun. Um, and let's make sure that we like what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you're having fun, then it doesn't feel like a job. Um, so yeah, I would say prioritize fun. Oh, I love that. I think we're very fun starved in our culture. <laughs> like we need more fun. Stop being so serious, have a little <laughs> bit of fun. And I think you're gonna have great outcomes. Yeah, that's great. Oh, well, thank you so much, Katie, for joining us. Um, is there anything that you wanna leave with the audience? I guess I'll just put a little bit in for my product. Um, my product team is coming out with the IDS Ultra that we talked about. It's coming this fall. So, you know, if any of you are homeowners and looking to replace your existing equipment, maybe for something more efficient, check out the IDS Ultra. It's a great um, way to heat and cool your home, stay comfortable, but do it in an efficient and environmentally focused way. So check it out. Awesome. I'll put some stuff in the show notes that people can go and check that out also. Awesome. So, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, Katie. Well, thank you so much and have a wonderful day and we'll talk to you soon. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Jessica. Thanks for having me. Bye, everybody. Thanks. And for those listening, if you haven't subscribed already, be sure to go do that so you don't miss a single episode. Bye.